Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we'll be learning about some of the angle bisector properties, such as the angle bisector definition and the theorem pertaining to the angle bisector. So for the do now, it states the following. The measure of angle BOA is equal to 2x plus 30 in the figure shown below. If the measure of angle COA is equal to 4x and the measure of angle BOA is equal to 40, compute the measure of angle BOC and the measure of angle COA. So from the do now, we have a very important information that will help us determine the value of x. For example, we know that the measure of angle BOA is equal to 2x plus 30, but we also know that the measure of angle BOA is equal to 40 degrees. So how can we solve this? By simply substituting and solving for x. We also should mention what property we're using in solving this because geometry is an axiomatic system and we want to always describe the property or the theorem that we're using here or even the definitions. So first we can write that 2x plus 30 is equal to 40 by the substitution postulate. Then we know that 2x is equal to 10 by the subtraction postulate. Again, we're subtracting equal quantities, which is 30, from equal quantities, which is 2x plus 30 equal to 40, to obtain 2x is equal to 10. Therefore, x is equal to 5 by the division postulate. So therefore, the measure of angle COA is equal to 20 degrees by the substitution postulate again. And how do we find the measure of angle BOC? Well, in this case, we know that the measure of angle BOA is 40 degrees. We just simply subtract 20 degrees. But first, we want to write that the measure of angle BOC plus the measure of angle COA is equal to the measure of angle BOA by the partition postulate. Then by the substitution postulate, measure of angle BOC plus 20 is equal to 40. And then finally, measure of angle BOC is equal to 20 by the subtraction postulate because we subtracted 20 on both sides. So it seems like that we have a lot of steps here for some simple algebraic problem, but keep in mind that according to the common core on the regions exam, you want to write out all the steps, not just the algebraic steps, but also the reason why these steps work using any postulates, theorems, or definitions. Now, notice that according to our answer, you can see it also in the diagram, that both angles, angle BOC and angle COA, are both 20 degrees. So what does that tell us? Basically, the question is, what is the function of ray OC? Well, it turns out that in this case, since we have two equal angles that are being split by ray OC, OC is called an angle bisector and hence the introduction to today's lesson of angle bisectors. So let's first define an angle bisector. So the definition of an angle bisector has very much to do with the fact that we have two equal angles as you can see here in this example. So according to the definition of an angle bisector, a ray is an angle bisector if and only if its endpoint is the vertex of the angle and that divides the angle into two congruent angles. Notice that here in the definition, we're not saying that we have two equal angles or angles of equal measure, but it specifically says congruent angles. So again, in a proof, if you ever have to prove that the measures of the angles are equal, First, you need to state that the angles are congruent because that's what the definition states. So first you would state that angle BOC is congruent to angle COA because of the definition of angle bisector. And then you can say that the measure of angle BOC is equal to the measure of angle COA. And then you can say that the measure of angle BOC is equal to the measure of angle COA because of the definition of congruent angles. One more thing to notice about the definition is that we have an if and only if statement here. 
uh, which is a biconditional, which means that it goes both ways, right? So we can say if a ray is an angle bisector, uh, then, you know, it uh, divides the ankle into two congruent angles, okay? And the other way is that, okay, if a ray divides the angle into two congruent angles, then the ray is the angle bisector. Obviously, it's already implied that um, its endpoint is on the vertex of the angle, okay, of the ray. So if you look at this particular diagram here, what else must be true here? Well, basically, if you, for example, look at the measure of angle BOC, and we know that OC is the angle bisector, ray OC. So what's the relationship between the measure of angle BOC and the entire angle BOA? Well, it turns out that the measure of angle BOC is exactly one half of the measure of angle BOA. And similarly, the measure of angle COA is also equal to one half the measure of angle BOA. Notice that here we cannot use congruent angles because we're dealing with measures, okay? So we have a number that is being multiplied by the whole angle. So it turns out that this relationship here um, brings us to a new theorem pertaining to the angle bisector theorem. So the theorem states as follows. A bisector of an angle divides the angle into two angles, each of which has measure half that of the given angle. Notice again that here now we're not discussing congruent angles as in the definition of angle bisector, but here we're talking about measures. So we have to keep this in mind that we cannot use congruent angles, but we have to use measures here for the theorem. Now, obviously, this is a theorem. What does that mean? That someone must have proven it. So why don't we do the same thing now? So let's say you have the following given. You know that ray OB bisects angle AOC. How would you prove that the measure of angle AOB is equal to one half the measure of angle AOC and also that the measure of angle BOC is equal to one half the measure of angle AOC? Notice that when we do this proof, we cannot use this particular theorem now. We're trying to prove this theorem. So we can use any other postulates that we know or other theorems that we have proven in the past or the definitions. So first, we want to set up the statement reason table and then and add the first given. So how can we use that given? Well, the only thing we can use here is now the definition of an angle bisector. So now we can state that the angle AOB is congruent to angle BOC. Again, that is the definition of an angle bisector. And I must use congruent angles here because the definition is talking about congruent angles. Okay, now we see measures here. We want to prove that we have some type of half of the measures, right? So we somehow have to convert this. And here we can write that the measure of angle AOB is equal to the measure of angle BOC. That's the definition of congruent angles. Then we can write that the measure of angle AOC is equal to the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC. And that is the partition postulate. Remember that the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. Okay, so now that we have that, what can we do here? Well, something is equal here, right? For example, if you look at the following, if you look at measure of angle AOB, uh, that is actually equal to the measure of angle BOC, right? So we can somehow use substitution here. And also for measure of angle BOC here, we have that that is equal to measure of angle AOB. So we can use that to our advantage now to substitute and then divide. Okay, so let's do that. So as a step number five, now we can write that the measure of angle AOC is equal to the measure of angle AOB plus measure of angle AOB. Notice that I've substituted measure of angle BOC with measure of angle AOB. So we can actually rewrite this as uh, measure of angle AOC is equal to two times measure of angle AOB. So this entire statement for number five goes all under the reason of substitution postulate. 
And for step number six, we can finally write that the measure of angle AOB is equal to one half the measure of angle AOC, because here we applied the division postulate, namely we divided two on both sides. Now all we need to do is repeat the step, but now instead of substituting the measure of angle B BOC, we are gonna substitute the measure of angle AOB with BOC instead. So the measure of angle AOC is equal to the measure of angle BOC plus measure of angle BOC, or simply the measure of angle AOC is equal to two times the measure of angle BOC. Again, all in the same reason of the substitution postulate. And again, measure of angle BOC is equal to one half the measure of angle AOC because of the division postulate. And notice that we just proven the theorem regarding the angle bisector, namely that a bisector of an angle divides the angle into two angles, each of which has measure half of the given angle. Again, we don't need to prove this again because we just did it here. Now in the future, you can use this theorem for other applications in statement reason tables. So that's basically it for today's lesson in defining the angle bisector and also in introducing the theorem pertaining to the angle bisector. If you have any questions at this point, please type it in the YouTube section where the comments are and otherwise have a fantastic day.